Hey, this is Matt once again. We're back to another video. The paid request is time for Travis. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, re reviews, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this is for the 1974 film Who. Although I've seen some places say 1975 or give or take. Now, it was based on the book. I never read the book. And I had never heard of this film. I didn't know what the hell this film was. But it stars Elliot Gould. And I like Elliot Gould as an actor. He was on the 70s movie MASH. He was in this film called The Long Goodbye, which I reviewed. And I thought it was an interesting movie. And like, he's a very capable actor in this time period. Now, he plays an FBI agent. And... The setup of the film is interesting, and it's sad that the film doesn't live up. It doesn't live up to that setup. This is a film that, with the right people, could be due for a remake, and would be interesting. But I would say it's very low T movie. This is car crash, and sometime later, this American scientist is sent back to the U.S. from behind was the Iron Curtain. And he's been rebuilt. Like he's been fixed up, rebuilt. He's got these cybernetic parts on him. Arms, head, chest. And the chunk of the film, good chunk, is Elliot Gould and FBI interrogating him, taunting him to make sure if he's the real scientist. If he's the real uh, Dr. Martino. Is it really you? Or is it a spy that they got someone to make into this and they you were fed that guy's memories, thought processes, all sorts of stuff. And yeah, I remember DNA was not a big factor at the time. The guy's like, what about my fingerprints? Well, I mean, that arm may be Dr. Martino's, but that doesn't mean you're Dr. Martino. Well, I remember this and this. Yeah, but do you remember it? Or did someone interrogate the real Dr. Martino and fed their information to you? Or are you someone that got brainwashed? Again, are you really you or are you some spy? Or are you a spy that you don't know that you're a spy? And so it'll go from a bit of Elliot Gould interrogating the guy and then it'll cut to a flashback. And it's kind of like two timelines where you have one timeline of the doctor waking up, regaining who he is, and the bad guys interrogating him, trying to brainwash him, trying to figure out what to do, get information, while Elliot Gould and his men are talking to this guy. So I kind of like that idea of a spy movie where you have one person... He now looks very different. And then the whole thing is, are you who you say you are? Or are you, again, a fake, a phony? A... And there's a lot of potential of this sci-fi mixed in with a spy movie. And Elliot Gould seems like an interesting choice as the lead based on, yeah, if you've ever seen The Long Goodbye and others, he could be... He could work well, but... I didn't hate the film, but I didn't love the film either. It kept me interested enough to see where the story was going, meaning what the result was, was the reveal. Number one, this movie looked very low budget. It looked like a TV movie. The way it's directed, there's nothing fancy, there's no interesting shots, uh, there's two little action scenes, but it's kind of annoying for me to say action. Like one is a clunky little car chase at the very beginning that ends with a car craning off and then there's some fire. Another's a, like a little shootout car chase that lasts, it's like in the middle of the movie, lasts, I don't know, less than a minute. Nothing you'll remember, you know, an hour after the movie's over. It's a very, very talky movie. Like, that's all it is, is talk. 
And again, that could maybe work, but also the effects are not that good. Like, if you type in Who1974 on Google, and you look at it, it looks goofy. Even for 1974, it looks goofy. I mean, I've older episodes of Star Trek have better stuff than this. Because it's like a silver skull cap with a thing that goes like over here. It's like a weird helmet that he's ready to wrestle. And then like around the eyes and lips, they just sprayed it with silver paint. And I'm like, you know what? If it was going to go cheap, I'd rather just have a full robot head. Like a full C-3PO type of head. Than uh, what we got here. Because, or just have a metal faceplate. And you, you can't take it off. And is it his face? Does he have a face? You could go into that whole deal. I've seen pictures of the book, the cover, and that looks better. But just, it's such a goofy looking face. You can't take it that seriously. I'm sitting there going, come on, man. I am, I'm sure this isn't a multi-million dollar movie, but you do a bit better than this. It just looks very goofy, especially the things around it. Like this little, I don't know how the hell you put it. And just the fact that like the around the eyelids and the lips is just sprayed paint. Even within the realm of the movie, what'd they do? Be like, yeah, we don't well the rest of you is silver, so let's just paint this stuff silver. Just to, you know, aesthetically speaking, for you to be a cover of Metal Man in Vogue or something. I don't that it's like come on, man. Come on. Even this, we could do a bit better than this. What's the big deal? Because again, it's your primary target and it just takes you a bit out of the movie with how serious everyone's taking the subject material. But then you see just how goofy the thing looks. The guy looks. As this back and forth, one's trying to condition and brainwash him, the other's trying to get the answers back and forth, back and forth. As some of you get little flashes of, like they're bringing up his childhood, you see a bit of his point of view during childhood, or a love that he had named, I think, Edith. And those shots are, that's like one of the few interesting bits of direction is to have some of those shots done in total point of view. And we're living through his eyes. Same with a flashback of him working with this other guy named Frank Haywood. And so it flashes to his point of view. We see through his eyes. Okay, that's a little bit something different. Elliot Gould, I'm not sure how... I wish they made his FBI character a bit more of his usual personality in movies. A bit more of the wise tractor. A bit more of the smart-ass guy. I think they made him play it a bit too straightforward. So it comes off a bit more bland than it should. I, I wish they had made him a little bit more like his character in The Long Goodbye. Or other movies where, again, a little bit more of that sass, a little bit more of that smart aleck. Kind of... I mean, we've seen this other stuff. Even... I don't know why I thought of this movie, because it's another sci-fi film, maybe. Eve of Destruction with Gregory Hines. Like, Gregory Hines had a bit of that smart aleck attitude. In part, a little bit of that, at least, to make Elliot Gould's character a bit more interesting. Also, I mean, this is another random bit, but I'm not sure if the FBI would really get into this as much. Wouldn't that be more the CIA type of thing? I don't know. I guess to a point where they have to go to Florida and that's where they get shot at and it's like a diversion for the guy to escape and he's walking around the street and everyone's looking at him and he goes to apologize to his old love and again it, throughout he's still trying to piece together who is he? Is he who we think it is? Then we think it's one way, then it's another way. 
like I said, that's the idea, the concept, the kind of bare skeleton of it all. Made it interesting enough for me to watch it all the way through. And like in a semi interested state. And like some of the ways Ren didn't feel too dumb or too stupid, at least to me. Why well, trying to play to the trying to keep you off guard as to who again this thing is. Is it the real doctor? Is the scientist? Is it not? Is it someone else? And I'll spoil it right here just because. So spoilers. When it's just the third act, it's really made you think it was this old friend, Frank Haywood, who defected and faked his own death. And the the Iron Curtain, the bad guy's going, okay, you don't look like him. You don't pretend to be him. You don't go under procedure. The guy agrees. And if something goes wrong, go back to the guy's farm. And then we're with the, the bad guy's farm. I mean, we're with the scientist farm. And Elliot Gould's there. And it's getting near the end. You know, oh, okay, this is the twist. But then, oh. The guy they wanted undercover died from shock. Because as the bad guy's doctor says, well, if you don't look like that, you don't want to have the yearning to live. And the only one who has a yearning to live looking like that is... This doctor here, this scientist. Because this is the reason the FBI and such are so interested, something to do with this Neptune program. Now, I don't remember if they go that in depth into what the Neptune program is, because they might have, and I forgot what it is, but it's something that both governments are very adamant about either finishing or finding out info about. But you find out it is the actual Martino and he doesn't want to go back to the Neptune project because he's tired of people looking at him this way and he just wants to live the quiet life on this farm. And Elliot Gould finally believes in him and who he is. And we see, because of this flash back of who the guy is and who he is, and some people may view that that may be a detriment because maybe people would like to have a bit more of a question mark or a bit more doubt. Uh, what's the, the word I'm looking for? Ambiguous. But there's nothing ambiguous about this. You find out, yes, it is the real scientist. It is the real American scientist. And the, the guys just gave him up because there's nothing else they could do. They couldn't brainwash, break the guy. They couldn't get another guy undercover. That guy died from shock. Just give him away because there's nothing we can do. Now, like I say, it was still, despite either you needed a much more intense guy in the FBI role other than Elliot Gould, or if you want to stay with Elliot Gould, give him a bit more of his sass and wise crack, wise ass quality. In other movies, I think could have made those scenes a bit more interesting. And just a bit more excitement. I mean, I did not want to do a fucking... Well, what would be equivalent of 70s, a Michael Bay? I don't know, who's the Michael Bay of the 70s? Does anyone know? Was there someone to be like a Michael Bay from the 70s? I'm not saying you need action every 10 minutes, but a little bit more excitement, a little bit more thrills. And also just a better look of the main object so that he doesn't look goofy or you don't almost want to laugh every time you look at him I think that would help a lot like I said this is a movie or the source material that could do for a remake like imagine remember the I like I robot but the big Will Smith investigating the robot and but what if that was okay, are you really this guy restructured or are you that's not the plot of I robot, but imagine Will Smith and the way that robot was with the voice and the way they interacted and if that went if that kind of thing was in was this movie 
I think that could be interesting. Because you have, you know, Will Smith being serious, but it could be funny as well. You have, even though, yes, the digital is a bit dated, that still looks better than what we have here. Uh, I don't know, I'm just going off tangents now. But... If you looked up the synopsis, it all interests you. I mean, I gave it away, but that's why I said spoilers. But for those who don't care about spoilers, you still want to give it a look. You, you, I mean, it got a Blu-ray. And of course, there are places online you can watch it. But it is a very talky movie. It's not a very exciting film. There's not a whole lot that happens other than this back and forth of showing these guys talking, these guys talking. If that doesn't interest you, then this movie's not going to do much for you. That's why I'm like, uh, it's interesting to have seen the film once because I had never heard of this sci-fi spy film before. And I kind of see why I have to watch it because it doesn't, there's potential, but it's not fully reached. Not nearly fully reached. Um, so with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later.